What does it mean to have a pure heart? In this lesson concerning kingdom alignment, we will explore what it means to have a pure heart and how important it is that every citizen of heaven purifies their heart so they can be used by God. <laughs> Welcome, Kingdom Citizens, to Heaven Culture. I'm your host, John Rainey, and it is my great honor to have you right here, where our objective is to transform believers into Kingdom citizens that think, talk, and act like Jesus, so that we can properly represent Heaven while living right here on Earth. Yes, if you're a born-again believer, you are a citizen of Heaven but only a temporary resident of Earth. On this channel, entitled Culture Wars, we are laying a foundation so we can understand how the kingdom operates and how we need to function in it. Then, from that kingdom perspective, we will be able to discuss what heaven has to say about the culture that we live in and what our responsibility as citizens of the kingdom really is. But first, we must renew our minds to think like the kingdom. Well, let's get into this. In the previous lesson, we discussed the importance of having a lifestyle of repentance. Well, the end result of a lifestyle of repentance is that you will have a clean or pure heart. In his inaugural message on the kingdom, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In this discourse, Jesus talked about the characteristics that kingdom citizens are supposed to have, and purity of heart was one of the first things on the list. But what does it mean? Well, let's take a minute and define purity and heart. The word pure means free from anything of a different, inferior, or contaminating kind, free from extraneous matter, unmodified by admixture or unmixed. So purity is freedom from anything that contaminates. Now, the heart, on the other hand, is a composite of the spiritual and solical faculties of man. It is the place where the spirit and soul come together. Now, the faculties or powers of the spirit are intuition, conscience, and communion. While the faculties or powers of the soul are mind, will, and emotions. Each of these individual faculties gives you the ability to do something special. Of course, we take these powers for granted, but imagine if you didn't have a mind or a will. Well, each of these faculties are powerful in themselves, but what happens when they are combined together? Well, God made us in such a way that all these faculties come together in an area called the heart. As each of these faculties come together in the heart, they give the person additional powers that are not available anywhere else. For example, the heart is where faith, the imagination, and our internal programming all reside. This is why God warned us in Proverbs 4.23 to guard your heart above anything else for that is the place where the forces of life actually reside and flow from. The heart literally has the power to create reality. The heart, therefore, having the combined power of each one of these areas is the most powerful thing that you have, which is why it requires such great diligence and protection from contamination. Beloved, it is essential 
that you cultivate a pure heart that is as free from the sinful contaminants of the world as possible. Because to the degree that your heart is pure is the degree which you will be able to see or experience God. Your ability to see, hear, and experience God depends on the purity of your heart. Christians who passively allow their hearts to become defiled are incapable of sensing God because the flesh rules their lives and makes their heart callous and insensitive to God. But another important point is that when the heart becomes defiled, all of the creative forces that come from a person are also defiled, meaning your powers will be aligned against the kingdom of heaven because the carnal mind is hostile to God. See Romans 8, 7 through 8. So it is only as we put the flesh to death and purify our hearts that we are capable of sensing God and being aligned with heaven. The Bible says in Titus 1, 15 and 16, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate, that is, unfit. So, when the heart is contaminated and defiled, a person is literally unfit for the good works that God has planned for their life. If you are truly born again, then your desire is to please God. So if that is the case, you must purify your heart by removing everything in your life that would contaminate it. When God began to work on me in this area, there were many things that he had to remove from my life, from certain types of music to television to movies and a whole lot more. But one of the first things that he began to deal with me about was separating myself from secular music. Being a person who loves all forms of music, this was particularly challenging for me. But undoubtedly, this was a problem area because ungodly music had become a stronghold in my life. So the Lord began to show me that Satan's strategy is to use music and other forms of entertainment for that matter to captivate the imaginations of people. Then from this platform, he is able to infiltrate the heart and defile it with his thoughts. He will use whatever medium available to accomplish this. But music was one of my weaknesses. But it's just music, you might say. To this, I would respond that Eve thought it was just a piece of fruit. But just as there were two trees in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that represent the two universal laws, the law of life, and the law of death. Likewise, everything that proceeds from man is fruit that is attached to one of these two trees. Godly music and music that espouses truth and morality flows from the tree of life, while evil music and that which opposes God is the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Therefore, you must understand what tree you're eating from. One of the world's most celebrated rock artists in history, Jimi Hendrix, understood the power of music. He once said, through music, you hypnotize people, and when you get them at their weakest point, you can preach into their subconscious what we want to say. Satan literally uses music to bring people's guards down and to plant his ideologies in them. Now, it was a fight, but this was one of the first things that God delivered me from and instead gave me a desire for his music. 
He will do the same thing for you if you let him. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are struggling with secular and even ungodly music. I pray, O oh God, that you would move in their lives and work your work of grace that would deliver them from the entrapments and the ensnarements of the wicked one. I pray that you would give them a desire for godly music and that you would remove the desire for ungodly music. And I pray for a work of grace in them that would deliver them from all the works of darkness in Jesus' name. Well, I hope that this blessed you. If it did, would you be so kind as to give it a thumbs up? While you're at it, click the subscribe button and the bell, and you'll be a part of all of our kingdom conversations. It would be my absolute honor to have you as a part of this channel. Finally, would you help me to connect with people in your circles by clicking the share button below? Thank you so much for partnering with us. Together, with God's grace, we will transform believers into kingdom citizens that think, talk, and act like Jesus so that we can represent heaven while living right here on earth. If you'd like to learn more about heaven culture or purchase any of our amazing products, please feel free to visit us online at heavenculture.co. That's heavenculture.co. Thanks so much for your time. I look forward to continuing this journey with you. Thank you.